Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to restarting uh, my Easy 900 Labs, which I have done probably almost six or seven months back. And Azure keeps changing so quickly, I decided to do the lab uh, over again uh, in November, end of November really. And uh, I'm, this time I'm going to use a Mac. Last time I used uh, uh, a Linux laptop mostly to do your AZ900 labs. If you're a lab Mac user, probably it's going to give you some little bit of uh, help you know, doing these labs. But probably you know the Mac better than I do. All right, so those labs, uh, if you are taking the Microsoft Fundamental exam, uh, these labs that we're going to follow, they're all available on GitHub uh, from the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals, uh, Microsoft Learning. And uh, I would highly recommend that you complete all 23 labs before you take the exam. And we will just do the labs in order. We'll do the Create a Virtual Machine Lab in this particular video. Okay, and we'll just follow the instruction as closely as possible and uh, make sure that we can follow the lab. And if you notice, these labs, they keep changing and these labs are updated only 19 days back because Azure is changing, you have new options available. So it would be good to uh, redo the labs. So let's just get started with that. So for, to do this lab, uh, one thing that you need is uh, uh, an active account with uh, Azure. Uh, if you do not have an active account, you can go there, get a free license. Uh, and you should be able to get started and follow the lab with me. So goal of this lab is pretty simple, uh, creating a virtual machine in the portal. And it's one of the most basic thing that you will do if you start using the Azure. And a uh, few tasks over here. Task one is going to create the virtual machine. Okay, if you read a little bit of it, we're just gonna sign into the portal. And uh, we'll just, start deploying a virtual machine and there are a couple things that uh, you should always know that uh, you need to have a, a subscription and you are going to choose a subscription uh, any resource that you deploy within Azure uh, they have to have a resource group so we'll create a resource group and we'll try to name it as closely uh, with the lab uh, with the lab guide as possible we'll name the virtual machine we are going to deploy it to the uh, east us location now there are many many uh, Azure regions all over the world, so you can choose some other other region as well. And images for this particular lab, we're going to use Windows Server 2019 Data Center Generation One. Uh, again, you have many many uh, images that are available in the marketplace, and uh, size Azure offers many different sizes of virtual machines. We are going to use the D2S V3. And uh, for administrator username and password, uh, I might use a different username and password just to make my uh, deployment a little bit more secure. And uh, we'll have the RDP port and HTTP port 80 open. So let's uh, just get started instead of just looking at this. So here I'm already logged into my, uh, to my Azure account. And what I'll do, I'll follow the lab. So first thing it says that you need to do is uh, all services virtual machine and click add so what i'll do i'll just actually uh, copy this okay and then from my portal what i do i never really go to the all services i always go over here in the search and uh, and i'm going to paste the virtual machine i'm just searching for the virtual machine and see the virtual machine showed up i'm just going to click on it and as soon as I click on it, I have the add button. Now this experience is going to be very, very similar with any other deployment that you're gonna do. So I'm gonna click on add then virtual machine. And uh, it's gonna give me the deployment configuration. Here, we're gonna create new. And we're gonna use the exact resource group name that uh, this this lab is asking us to use so I'm gonna paste it and hit OK so now this resource group is gonna be created virtual machine name again I'm gonna go there get the virtual machine name okay let's copy 
and over here not over here over here paste the virtual machine name again as I said is TOS is by default is chosen but if you click on it there are many many other regions that are also available uh, depending on your need availability we don't need to care about at this point so I'm just gonna change to no infrastructure redundancy required and since we're gonna deploy Windows Server 2019 data center generation 1 I want to choose that image over here and if you look at this as soon as this is chosen here the uh, uh, a different size is chosen because I have used this size before because I, I usually typically for testing use some some of the uh, size that are very low in cost like this size that I have chosen before is costing only ten dollars and twenty two cents but for the lab we're gonna use a D2S V2 let me make sure that's the size they want D2S V3 so let's just come back over here and D2S V3 uh, where is my D2S V3 D2S I see D2S V2 D2S V3 is right here it's a general purpose so it is telling you it's a general purpose in the family uh, it's gonna give you two virtual core 8 gigs of RAM 4 uh, data disks uh, here is a uh, 32 uh, 100 is the maximum IOPS uh, 16 gigs of temporary storage and uh, premium disk it supports premium disk so it's not a you know a, a very highly efficient configuration but it's not too bad either so we're gonna choose that one uh, one thing that uh, we haven't talked about is that you spot instance and if you anytime you have a question you can take your mouse on those I icons and this one is saying spot offers unused Azure capacity at a discounted rates versus pay as you go price. Workloads should be tolerated to infrastructure loss as Azure may recall capacity for pay as you go workloads. So if you want to save some money, uh, do some research on the Azure spot instance. If you want to use that one, if you have some machines that are not super critical, uh, you may want to use this option to save some money. So that might be a question in your AZ-900 exam, what it is, and just uh, you know, be, be familiar with this concept and uh, use it if you need it. All right, for Azure account, I'm just going to use a different username and a different password that I'm not going to tell you. And you repeat the password. And once you have both of the passwords there correct, uh, if you see you are getting all the green tick marks, so that means everything is going well so far. And for the port, we are going to allow uh, RDP 3389. This is like a default configuration, so you don't have to worry about here. Uh, licensing is another thing where you can save a lot of money. Uh, save up to 45% with the license you already own using Azure Hybrid Benefit. So I would recommend that you do some investigation on this link as well another money saving options if you already have a whole bunch of Microsoft licenses that you use on-prem and you're moving to the cloud and you want to reuse some of the licenses it could be a huge cost saving for you now here would you like to use existing Windows Server license here again if you are using this one you would choose that one for now I'm not uh, doing anything uh, let's go to disk and let's come back to the lab and see so we have pretty much configured all of it uh, we have not configured uh, HTTP AD. We will do that uh, in a little bit. Uh, switch to the networking tab. So, so you see that this even this direction is not complete. So it's keeping the disk. So here uh, they are using premium SSD and uh, default encryption at rest with platform managed key. So this is something also might be a question. Any storage at a uh, hardware level they're always encrypted at less rest within the Azure okay that's by default so you cannot change that you can use your own key but by default all Azure instances they are uh, encrypted with uh, with this uh, with the encryption that's uh, completely uh, transparent to you okay so let's go back and over here just look at it if they have mentioned anything about the storage 
uh, they have not so that's that's okay so come back over here uh, over here so I'm gonna keep the premium SSD since it supports uh, but if you look at it it supports your standard HDD uh, things for you for the exam if you use that one pay attention to the SLAs okay select the VM size supports premium disk this particular type we recommend premium SSD so if somebody asks you in the, in the exam hey you're deploying what kind of disk you should be using premium SSD if you want uh, if you want confirmation with the SLA 99.9 percent .9%, so you gotta use the premium uh, with the standard is not gonna work standard HDD is not gonna work uh, standard SSD is gonna give you the same uh, comments over here saying that hey go you go ahead and use the premium uh, if you are if you care about the 99.9% .9 connectivity SLA so I'm gonna choose the premium for now and uh, I don't need any data disk at the moment advanced I'm not managing anything manage disk is something uh, you don't need to worry about at the moment we go to networking and uh, in this networking uh, they're they're saying make sure these two inbound ports are open we have already opened the 3389 in the very first page so over here let's see if you can add another port in here okay so it's uh, it's just I'm just gonna keep all the default options here like the virtual uh, network name subnet name subnet IP address range uh, it's gonna assign a public IP so that you can connect to the to that virtual machine over internet and NIC network security groups and here allow selected ports so let's click on that one here you see that you have 3389 that we have already selected in the very first page uh, here I'm also gonna select 80 because that's what they are asking us to select right select inbound ports and then uh, we should be good in this particular page okay uh, accelerated networking you don't need to do anything about it load balancing I'm not interested at the moment uh, let's go to management here uh, enable basic plan for fee as your security center that's fine uh, this is a newer option that I'm seeing these days uh, at least six months back when I did this lab this option was not available to me uh, boot diagnostics at this time you can uh, disable this one if you enable it you will need a dedicated storage account uh, right now we don't need that one so I'm going to disable that one with guest diagnostic it's automatically it's like default is off and I'm going to keep it off uh, system assign manage identity this is something a little bit advanced topic you will learn it but you can uh, do some investigation on that one for now I'm going to keep it off just to be consistent with the lab uh, let's go come back that one and uh, that's pretty much it you are already at a point where you can just create the lab the couple things they have added here auto shutdown uh, I'm not sure if this option was there six months back or not but I'm pretty sure the backup option was probably a newer newer integration and the, and the patch updates so this is uh, absolutely uh, something that I like uh, here even when at the time of deployment it is asking how would you like to get the patch deployed with orchestrated patching patching will be installed by the OS or do you prefer manual patching install patches yourself or through a different patching solution this is very important in terms of security and what kind of risk you want to evaluate do you really uh, want manual patching and, and risk missing some of the patches or do you want to automatically get always the update and and then uh, maybe one of the application is not not uh, compatible with your patch so which one is more important to you so you no, but now you have an option to do that as well all right but for now I'm just keeping everything as default I'm going to the next this is the advanced step and, and notice every page I go that page is really highlighted in that blue bar blue underline uh, extension something you will learn later but for this one we don't need anything uh, tags tags are always useful but for this lab we don't need the lab I can just do is a 900 name uh, I can say lab one if your value and uh, that's about it and just uh, that's it that's it that's it that's your tab 
uh, tag that you added one you can add multiple tags here if you like as well uh, just go hit uh, review and create it's gonna go through some validation and if it fill and if you have enough resources uh, and uh, availability uh, available in your subscription and your subscription is allowed to deploy a virtual machine in the East US you should the validation should pass and it says the validation has passed so what we'll do we'll click on the create button and before you do that uh, you can look at this information right here so it's it's pretty much it's gonna give you what we have configured so far like the subscription name uh, resource group name virtual machine name region where you're gonna deploy your availability option what image you have chosen Windows Server 2019 data center generation 1 your memory uh, your username what ports are open um, and then some other disk premium uh, SSD that we're using uh, and then uh, uh, networking this is the network that it's gonna create uh, here is 10.0.1.0 slash 24 is the subnet and your public IP name would be my VM dash IP uh, and some other stuff here is we have some tags and if you see uh, we have one tag that's got automatically generated and looks like there's a whole bunch of other other tags that we have not set but it's already got selected and it will be created as part of the VM creation okay uh, then if you want you can also download a template for the automation so you can do this creation or in an automated fashion for this lab we don't need to do that I'm just need to create hit the create button and then wait now one thing that you notice as soon as you hit the create button over here uh, there I just say not now over here in this notification bar a notification uh, showed up and it says deployment in progress over here in this big uh, big page you have also the details of the of the deployment that is going on is creating an IP address a network security group a virtual network everything that a virtual machine will need before uh, it can create the actual virtual machine for you so these are associated uh, things that that are getting getting deployed first and then you have the virtual machine you can also go inside the resource group and here it says the resource group go inside the resource group and uh, resource group I always like this tiny little uh, thing over here that says deployment and it kind of tells you the status of the re resource group what's going on in terms of deployments you can click on it says one deploy so you can click on that one and uh, you should be able to see the name of the deployment this is like the deployment template so you can click on that one and again it will take you back over here and look at that so a whole bunch of things got created and now uh, probably took how, how many how many minutes maybe two three minutes it says your deployment is now complete so at this time here if you want you can create another VM it's giving you some uh, enable automation for virtual machine best practices some other things that you can do for this virtual machine enable uh, setup auto shutdown if you want monitor your VM health performance and network dependencies run a script inside the virtual machine lots of things that they're saying that uh, additional steps that you can do now we want to go to the virtual machine so if you click on that uh, notification bar again uh, here I have a nice blue button go to resource I can click on that one and that is going to take me inside the virtual machine and the way you know that it, it the name of the virtual machine will show up over here at the top left corner and it's going to tell you what kind of resource there is and it's telling me this is a virtual machine now this particular tag lab one that we assigned it is showing up over here and it's telling me the status is running uh, in deployed in the East US. Here's the sponsorship ID, subscription ID, subscription name and subscription ID. Uh, it's a Windows operating system. That's the size that we are using two virtual core uh, CPU and eight gigs of memory. Here's my public IP address. This is important. This is what we need uh, to be able to connect to the virtual machine. Okay, and here is some more stuff about the networking uh, and whole bunch of stuff in here that we will investigate uh, little by little as we as we go let's go back to the lab 
So if I come back over here, uh, uh, so pretty much we are done with the task one, right? The create the virtual machine. Now the next thing, once you create the virtual machine, you would want to connect to the virtual machine, okay? So here, this section, uh, this is the guide if you are on a Windows machine. I'm on Mac, uh, it's uh, gonna be fairly similar, okay? So let's just do that. So let's come over here. The easiest way is go and come to the connect button over here, uh, the, the tab, you just click on that link and it's gonna give you the RDP SSH or Bastion. Uh, since this is a Windows machine, I'm going to download the RDP if you click on it. It is going to ask you, okay, connect with RDP to connect with virtual machine. Select an IP address. Now, if you click on this one, you see you can select both the private and the public IP address. Now, since I'm using my home network, I would need the public IP address and I'll select that one. And RDP connection goes through port 3389, so I'll keep that one and I'm going to click on download RDP file. For the Windows, pretty much you will do the same thing. So once it's downloaded, okay, and it will show up as myvm.rdp, I'm just gonna click on it. And what I have, I have a Mac version of the remote desktop and you can you can download that one uh, in your Mac. And I'm just gonna provide my username and then my and my password and hit continue it should give you a certificate error because I don't have a valid certificate from a certificate authority but this is fine you just click on hit as continue and it's telling me configuring remote PC and it will take me inside that PC and it will take the whole full screen so here I am and this screen that you're looking at uh, this is no longer the screen of my Mac this is the virtual machine and it has taken over the whole full screen of my Mac machine and uh, everything that is going on that you are seeing, the black screen, the personalized setting that is, sh that is showing up, it is the starting up of the 2019 server and look at that. So we are right now inside our virtual machine. Here I'm just gonna say network, yes, it's fine. Uh, here is my server manager. Uh, and that's about it so you have a virtual machine and it's so easy to uh, deploy uh, there are many things that we haven't talked about uh, like before you really deploy a virtual machine you got to think about the tagging you got to think about the the, the storage you got to think about what kind of uh, uh, what 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 is the region where you want to deploy what is the networking uh, do you have an overlap between the IP range that you have on-prem versus what you have uh, on the cloud? So, But this lab is just to get you started with how quickly you can deploy a machine and we have done that. So let's go back to the lab and see what else they're doing. So we are done with uh, section 2 where we are able to connect to the virtual machine successfully and we are inside the machine now. Uh, third thing, install the web server role and test. So, so this is something that you will be doing a lot in many of these labs, okay? So here, uh, to install a web server role, what we'll do, we'll go and we'll open the web, uh, Windows PowerShell, okay? And on the Windows PowerShell, we, uh, we need to run this particular command. And this command is install Windows feature, name web server, and dash include management tool. So let's just do that. So let's go back in here. And from there, let's uh, try opening up PowerShell. Let's see if it shows up. Uh, Windows PowerShell and just run as administrator. It's there and I'm just copying and pasting. So the copying of uh, the commands from your local computer to this remote is seamless. So that's great. So I don't have to type all the commands. And it is now installing my web server feature. So that will start a web service and uh, the IIS will be running on port 80. Okay, so that's the goal. So from the outside, from the internet, once this is done installing, I should be able to go to the public IP address and go to port 80. And I should see there should be a page that's serving uh, on, on that IP address. Okay, so as soon as this is done, we'll do that. Okay, while, while this is going on, let's see what else this is, they're asking us to do. 
when completed there will be a prompt stating success with a value true so we'll look for that one you do not need to reach to the virtual machine to complete the installation close the RDP connection to the virtual machine okay uh, back in the portal and if you get back to the overview played click to the so they're asking asking you to take the uh, copy the public IP address of the virtual machine and go to your web browser and paste your IP address and you should see this page okay so that's pretty much it that would be the end of our lab and it will prove that we are able to deploy a virtual machine we were able to connect to the virtual machine we are able to perform some work like installing the IIS web server and we are able to connect to the web page from the internet so the ports are open right so let's see if we so it, it says true that means it's a success it's a success everything looks good so I don't need this connection anymore so I'll come back over here uh, am I out of the virtual machine yes I am so let's go to the virtual machine one more time go to overview tab copy your IP address okay so let's open a new tab and uh, paste it over here uh, once you have that and I'm just gonna hit enter and I better see that I yes and I have it so that's it so that's the end of the lab and now since you are at the end of the lab I'm gonna tell you one more thing that's gonna save you a lot of uh, uh, headache uh, for these labs I would recommend that once you are done with the lab go back to your uh, Azure portal and what I would recommend that you delete that resource group completely to do that just go to the resource lab and make sure that lab is not going to be used uh, in any other labs so here also they are saying no to avoid additional cost you can remove this resource group search with the resource group and here verify the name and click on delete so it seems like this lab will not be used in the future so what I'll do I'll come here go back to my uh, uh, Azure and here I'm in the resource group right this is my resource group I'm gonna click on this button right here delete resource group and it's gonna tell me ask me type the resource group name I'm gonna come here copy this one okay copy this one and again paste it over here and then this button is now available for me to delete and I'm just gonna delete click on the delete button so what is going on right now it's deleting the resource group of the virtual machine it will gonna delete everything it will stop the virtual machine deallocate everything and delete it so that I'm not incurring any more cost uh, for the virtual machine okay if you like this video please give me a like a thumbs up if you are uh, studying for the exam please subscribe I keep on doing many videos uh, and you can request for other videos if you have any questions please leave a comment if you're really studying for the exam good luck uh, easy 900 is a really good entry level exam and you should have no problem passing that one good luck again have a great day